Razer has finally found the best balance between power and portability with the Blade 14. It has AMD's latest mobile processors, Nvidia's fastest graphics, and a really responsive 14 inch display. And it wraps all that together in a sub four pound package. What's not to love? While Razer's 13 inch Blade Stealth is even lighter, I've always found that machine to be a little unpowered and seriously overpriced. And the Blade 14 just has a better balance overall. It does what Razer does best, bringing together powerful hardware in an overall polished package that just feels better than the competition. Imagine a shrunken down version of the Blade 15 and you've pretty much got the 14 inch model. It has the same black aluminum unibody case that all of Razer's machines have had over the past decade pretty much. And you know, it just has a look that really resembles Apple's MacBook Pro. They've been making PC hardware that is almost as polished as Mac hardware. And I think they're still succeeding at that, although I'd probably like to see some changes down the line. It is subtle and pretty minimalist too. I think the only thing that really, you know, sells this as a gaming laptop is the RGB keyboard where every key can light up in a different color. Also the logo lights up pretty well too. If you turn off that keyboard, uh, you could easily bring this computer into an office or classroom and not feel like you're bringing a giant gaming machine. Like most 14 inch gaming laptops today, I think the big selling point with the Blade 14 is that it's just more portable than a typical 15 inch gaming notebook. But here's where Razer's own you know, design innovations tend to work against it. The Blade 15 now weighs around 4.4 pounds, which is pretty light compared to some of the other 15 inch models out there. Uh, some go up to five pounds. The Blade 14 weighs around 3.9 pounds. So that's a half pound difference. Something that you would notice you know, if you're holding each in, uh, in your hands and comparing them. But if you're carrying it around in a backpack or just walking it around you know, your house during the day, you probably won't notice it that much. Maybe the weight would have been more impressive last year when the Blade 15 was over 4.6 pounds, or if Razer had somehow managed to get the Blade 14 under 3.9. You know, there is the ROG Zephyrus G14, which we love, and that is a three and a half pound 14 inch gaming laptop. And to me, that was a big selling point of that machine. But I'm not gonna complain too much. Uh, it's still, you know, under four pounds. It's relatively light and the entire package feels solid, which probably matters more than fractions of a pound when it comes to weight. This isn't the first time that Razer has had a 14 inch laptop either, which kind of takes away some of the shine from the Blade 14. Uh, three years ago, there was a 14 inch Blade model that had, you know, seventh gen Intel processors and Nvidia's GTX 1650 hardware. It was fine, uh, but you know, that was before Razer really started shaving the screen bezels down, so it looks a little chunky today. The big innovation with this model is that it is the first Razer laptop with an AMD CPU. It has the top of the line uh, Ryzen 9 5900 HX, and of course, it has the latest NVIDIA GeForce graphics. It's worth noting though that, you know, PC makers have a lot of leeway when it comes to the amount of voltage that they give NVIDIA's GPUs. So on a machine like this, where it's really thin and trying to be really light, uh, our review model has the RTX 3080. That's not gonna be as fast as an RTX 3080 on a larger laptop. Basically, these GPUs aren't exactly the same across model to model, especially when it comes to laptops. So just keep that in mind when you're buying things. Our review unit was the most expensive configuration, a $2,800 build with the Ryzen 9 5900HX, the RTX 3080, 16 gigabytes of fixed RAM, a one terabyte NVMe SSD, and a quad HD 165 Hertz display. Given all that hardware, I'm not surprised that the Blade 14 handled just about every game and benchmark I threw at it. I saw around 120 FPS in Destiny 2 in 1440p with all the graphics cranked up. And when it comes to ray tracing, which is gonna be a big selling point for a lot of people, this machine I saw between 60 and 70 FPS in Control, which is a super demanding game. And I was playing that in 1440p with medium ray tracing settings. That's usually the most playable uh, balance I can find uh, these days across every GPU. That's that's pretty good, but I did have to use NVIDIA's DLSS technology, which upscales the image quality using AI. So you won't really be able to run ray tracing natively on most games. DLSS is a big help here. And overall, I found this just really playable and nice. While my overall gaming performance was great, I definitely noticed some areas where Razer had to make some compromises. The Blade 14 clocked in lower than Lenovo's Legion 5, a 15 inch, much larger laptop, uh, when it came to most 3D benchmarks and Geekbench 5's compute benchmark. And that's surprising because that one has a RTX 3070, which should technically be a slower GPU than the 3080. But again, thermal constraints. 
And compared to the Asus Zephyrus G15, which we reviewed this year, which has a Ryzen 9 5900HS, which should be a little slower technically, uh, and also an RTX 3080, the Blade 14 was also just a bit slower, maybe by a few hundred points. You wouldn't really notice it in day to day. But again, this is one area where just having a bigger laptop can get you a little more performance. I also noticed that the Blade 14 could just get super hot uh, while I was playing. The CPU could get up to 94 degrees Celsius, which is surprising because uh, I don't typically see CPUs getting above 85C these days in gaming laptops. So at times, the bottom of the laptop just felt a little too hot to the touch. Definitely don't put this on your lap right after gaming for a long time. Despite running so hot, it lasted 10 hours and 50 minutes in our battery benchmark. That's mainly for productivity tasks, so expect it to last a lot less if you're gaming unplugged. The Blade 14 smaller case also impacted its keyboard. It looks and mostly feels like all of Razer's keyboards so far. Uh, you know, there's a decent amount of key depth. Uh, it's pretty responsive and springy, but because it is a slimmer case, the keyboard has to be a little more compact. And I found that to be kind of an issue while I was playing Destiny 2. My fingers just started to get cramped after a while. Maybe I'm just becoming an older gamer, but I do think for a lot of people, um, that alone could be a deal breaker. This is a gaming laptop after all. You're really gonna be hitting those WASD keys really hard during shooters, and if your fingers just can't sit there nicely and comfortably, uh, that could be a big problem. Port-wise, the Blade 14 crams in most of what you'd want. Two USB 3.2 connections with charging, two USB 3.2 Type-A sockets, a full-size HDMI port, a headphone jack, and a custom power cable. I definitely appreciated that the USB-C connections can also charge. Uh, that is just a nice thing to have if you're ever away from the normal power adapter. I also appreciated that the USB ports are on both sides of the laptop, so you could, you know, connect accessories and charge no matter where you are. Like most gaming laptops, uh, you won't be able to game and charge over USB-C at the same time, but hey, it's still a nice feature to have, and uh, the actual charging brick isn't that big, which is also pretty nice. Uh, I've seen a lot of gaming laptops shove very large AC adapters in uh, together with the machines, and that just makes carrying everything super difficult, uh, you know, if you're traveling with a backpack or something. As usual, I would have liked to see an SD card reader. That's just me, I'm always dealing with photos and media. Uh, but again, that's another reason to look at the larger Razer laptops, so the Blade 15, the Blade 17. Similarly, you can't upgrade the RAM on the Blade 14. You can only upgrade the NVMe SSD, and even then you're limited to a two terabyte drive, which honestly isn't much these days as games are getting bigger and bigger. Both the Blade 15 and 17 let you add more RAM, you know, larger capacities, and also up to two NVMe drives, which could be a major deal, I think, for a lot of people. The Blade 14 starts at $1,800 with an RTX 3060 and a 1080p 144Hz screen. And that is definitely on the high end of entry point for gaming laptops. Razer is a premium brand after all. I think given that price though, um, maybe take a closer look at the Blade 15. You'll get slightly more powerful hardware, at least comparably, better thermal constraints, and I think more port accessibility and upgradability down the line. And again, it's not that much heavier. So if you get a chance and you're really looking at the Blade 14, maybe get those two, try to compare the sizes. I do think uh, having a slightly bigger screen uh, is more immersive for gaming too. So that's just a big consideration there. And when it comes to the 14 inch competition, I still really love the Asus Zephyrus G14, uh, which I reviewed last year, has been updated for this year. Uh, there are stock issues with that one. It's sometimes hard to find it. And I think overall, in terms of hardware reliability, Razer tends to be better. So that's just a thing to consider. Uh, last year though, the G14 was going under 1500 bucks. So depending on the price you can get, you'll probably get a better deal there. Given all of that though, there's still a lot to love about the Blade 14. I think more so than the Blade Stealth, this model does a better job of balancing power and portability and just giving you more of what you'd want from a gaming machine. So if you're okay with the compromises of a sub four pound gaming laptop, then go with the gaming gods, get the Blade 14. Stay tuned to Engadget.com for more of our gaming laptop and hardware reviews. And if you dug this video, be sure to like and subscribe.